How would you like to go on a road trip visiting sites of historical interest in the beautiful highlands of Scotland and finishing up with a ferry trip to Skye? If you're interested in the people, places and events in Scottish history, then click the subscribe button at the bottom right of the screen and ring the notification bell to make sure that you're reminded when I upload new videos. In the meantime, let me take you on a journey. We're starting from the dramatic location of Neptune's Staircase, a series of locks that will raise you to the level of the lochs of the Great Glen. Did you hear that? Locks, lochs, locks, lochs. The difference is obvious. Locks, a man-made gated watertight basin used to manage the movement of vessels from one mortal altitude to the other. Lochs, an inland, or sometimes coastal, piece of fresh, or sometimes salt water, bounded entirely, or sometimes partially, by land. You see? Where's the confusion? Anyway, we're going to drive along the sides of these locks and lochs on the B8004. It takes around half an hour along this delightful road and it's a lovely way to start the day. You'll take a left-hand fork in the road and at the end of that fork you'll get some history and beautiful scenery all rolled into one. So our first stop is here at Achnacari at the Clan Cameron Museum. It's an absolute beautiful surroundings and we're going to find out history, not just of Clan Cameron, but of Scotland in general. Let's have a look around. Now, this place isn't just for folk who hail from Clan Cameron. It goes without saying that there's memorabilia here that celebrates the clan and some of its incredible characters over the years. From characters who are still sung about in folk songs all the way to modern... Oh, I forgot about him. Don't let that put you off. There wasn't a member of Slytherin that didn't go bad. Focus, Bruce, focus. I suppose the point is that over hundreds of years there have been Camerons who have been close to power, who have been at the right hand of royalty and made fateful decisions that have changed the course of these islands. Some are Jacobite heroes to this day. One was the last Jacobite executed after the 1745. But here you can immerse yourself. In World War II, Achnacari was the home and training ground for a new type of warrior, the Commandos. The rugged highlands were the perfect proving grounds for men who would take on extraordinary tasks of martial prowess, much like the Cameron clansmen before them. It's funny how battens pass from one warrior hand to another over changing times and different sensibilities. Each follow their duty as they see it. There's little that illustrates that better than a walk down to the riverside here at Achnacari. As we walk down by the River Archig, you can see what was intended as a beautiful tree-lined avenue behind me. In fact, when you look at the trees that go along, you'll see they're often clumped together in groups like that, so they're not this beautiful tree-lined beach avenue. I wonder why that is. Well, in 1745, Bonnie Prince Charlie landed in Eriskay and then came over to the mainland and sent out word to Cameron of Lochiel, who was the chief here in, of Clan Cameron. And at the time, he was planting out what was going to be a tree-lined avenue all the way up to the old castle. And when the call came from Bonnie Prince Charlie, they just dug in the trees that they were planning to set out in this avenue, thinking, I'll go over, I'll meet Bonnie Prince Charlie, tell him it's not a good time for this, I'll go back, and then we'll plant the trees out properly. Of course, you know what happened. Cameron is persuaded to take his men to Glenfinnan, and it's the start of the rising. They go all the way down to Derby, all the way back up, and Lochiel has to escape to France, never coming back to set the trees out in that beautiful line all up the avenue. 
It's a sad story in many ways, but I still think it's a beautiful place. But there's more recent effects in these trees because if you look closely, you'll see bolts and nails going up the trees. Now that was from the time of the commandos because they held ropes and various climbing equipment that they would uh, they would shimmy across a rope across the river up and down there would be this was the training ground for the commandos this rugged environment that would prepare them for going behind enemy lines there's a beautiful and long lasting history at Achnakari and I hope you enjoy it when you come in the aftermath of Culloden, Lieutenant Colonel Edward Cornwallis, some redcoats and an independent company of Monroes arrived at Achnacari. In the castle, at the end of the nascent, higgledy-piggledy tree-lined avenue, was burned to the ground. This phoenix rose out of the ashes. As you leave Achnacari and drive round the southern end of Loch Lochy, you come to the monument that celebrates those commando heroes who trained in this rugged land. A soaring monument commemorating giant men facing Scotland's highest peak. Most such memorials are in a street or in a park. Somehow, I don't think that would be quite enough. These towering giants of men should be commemorated in a grand landscape. Continuing on this road trip, you'll pass by some stunning scenery and glances from the car are golden. But there are times, like overlooking Loch Loyne, where you just have to stop and soak up that view. I know, we're back in the car, and it's almost like a sensory overload. There's so much stop your bread scenery around. But I'm going to show you another cracker. And I'm going to explain the geology that made it. Turn off for Glenelg at Shield Bridge and take the winding road up above Rattigan, and this is what you'll see. The top of Loch Duich and the Five Sisters of Kintail. You might look at it and think of millions of years of change, molten rock bursting forth, cooling over time. Ice Age freezing water into glaciers that carve out an unintended beauty. You'd be wrong. You see, what happened was that many years ago, in the time of heroes, Two Irish princes were shipwrecked and they were washed ashore and they found their way up Loch Duich where they were welcomed by the King of Kintail who had seven daughters. Now, the two youngest of these sisters were the most beautiful that these princes had ever seen and they asked for their hand in marriage. But what about the other five, their father asks. Surely the eldest should marry first. Fear not say the princess, for we have five brothers in Ireland who would be only too willing to come back and marry your five daughters. So, the marriages took place. The newlyweds headed across the sea and the five sisters waited for their suitors to return. They waited and they waited and they grew older. Eventually, they asked the grey magician of Corridonach if he could stop them ageing and allow them to wait for their admirers, never changing and beautiful. The grey magician said that he could and he turned them into the mountains that you see in front of you, the five sisters of Kintail. When you leave the Five Sisters, the views aren't over. On any other trip, in many other countries, the drive over the pass and down into Glenelg would be the highlight in itself. For us, it's just Scotland. Now, by this time, you're probably up for a bite of lunch or a drink, and there's a great wee inn at the heart of Glenelg where you can feed your wame or wet your thrapple. 
Of course, if you're the designated driver, make sure that it's no more than a soft drink because we've got other places to go. It's almost impossible to go anywhere in the Highlands without tripping over something from the Jacobite era. It's only then that you realise how oppressive that military occupation must have been to folks occupied by people with a different language and culture. In the aftermath of the 1715 uprising, the Hanoverian government wanted to strengthen their grip in the Highlands. It would ultimately lead to a network of strongholds up and down the Great Glen and beyond, Rutherford Barracks, Fort George, Fort Augustus, Fort William, and Bernara Barracks here. This would cover the narrowest point that people could cross to the mainland from Skye. It was finished in 1723 to house up to 240 troops who would monitor, patrol and control the surrounding area. It was abandoned in 1797 once the job was done. And since then, it's fallen into decay. But it still stands as a reminder of those days in a beautiful setting. But there's more in Glenelg, so let me show you a reminder of still earlier times, which might have provided some of the stone to build the barracks in the first place. When I was in Shetland, I took you to Musa Broch. It is the most uniquely complete and best preserved broch. And if you come back and click top right, you can find out all about brochs in general and my trip to Musa in particular. Brochs are an incredible Iron Age construction unique to Scotland and here at Glen Elg, Glen Beck is the most complete on the mainland, nestled in the most gorgeous setting that you can think of. Here you can lose yourself in imagination and take yourself back to the lives and times of our Iron Age forefathers. What's more, you can get two for the price of one. Because a quarter of a mile up the road, there's another at Duntrodden. And that is right next to a microbrewery that's open most afternoons. Woohoo! Now, I said that we'd end up in the Isle of Skye, and we will. In fact, if you're going to be making this trip on the 16th of September 2023, you should click the link top right and get tickets for my show, Stories of Scotland, in the Arras Centre in Portree. Now, obviously, there'll be a link for all my tour shows and tickets in the description below, but the 16th of September is when I'll be at Arras. It's a brilliant wee theatre and I'll be telling you Stories of Scotland. Click the link top right for tickets or all tour dates and tickets. Get them in the link in the description below. The good news is that if you want to get there from here, you can take the Glen Elg Ferry. The MV Glenachulish is the last manually operated turntable ferry in the world, which makes this a genuinely unique way to end our journey. And if that's not a reason to take this route to Skye, then surely the wonders of Glen Elg are it's a truly magical place. If you'd like to see another historical road trip video, then there's one coming up on screen now. Support the channel by clicking top right to become a Patreon member or buy me a coffee in the description below. I hope to see you live in the Aris Centre in Skye. Hamian Dawkins, give me a lama like. Cheerio and Rasta. <laughs>